Week 10 begins with a primetime matchup on Thursday Night Football. The 85 Bears take on the 89 Niners, and those Niners will get a quick field goal, 3 to nothing in the first, but then Walter Payton would catch his pass from McMahon and take it 83 yards to the house. Walter Payton with a huge play for the Bears, 7-3 early in the second quarter, and then a pick six by Dave DeWerson to give Chicago a huge lead right before halftime. But Roger Craig, right before the two-minute warning, would get his team on the board in the end zone, then 14-10, Mike Wilson getting his team in position for a field goal attempt, but that'd be missed right before halftime. Then in the fourth quarter, Montana down by four, has to make a play here. He'd hit Williams' his tight end in the end zone to take the lead, 17-14. One last chance for Chicago. They'd be driving, hitting McKinnon, but it'd be picked off by Keena Turner. That would seal the deal for the Niners. They win by the final 17-14 and are 7-2. 98 Jags in the 9 Jets first quarter. This shows a defensive struggle in the football game. Fred Taylor breaking one, two, three, four, almost five tackles in the game just to get a three-yard run. That'd be followed up by the Jets' Thomas Jones 18-yard run for a touchdown to make it seven to three at halftime. Jets would attack on another field goal. Jay Feely making it 10 to three. Then one last Jets for the Jags. They get down to the 40-yard line. The only problem is they're out of timeouts and they run out of time. Score 10 to three Jets. 90 Bills and the 99 Titans. Not much going on until 90 seconds to go in the first half when Bird would catch the pass and go 50 yards for a touchdown, seven to nothing. And what a wacko dance in the end zone. After that, it'd be another touchdown. Steve McNair would hit Frank Wojcik. Last chance for the Bills here. With 42 seconds to go, be picked off. This shows the Bills' inability to create offense. 14 to nothing. They're shut out. They're five and four. The 02 Buccaneers and the 72 Miami Dolphins. Second quarter. It'd be a big play to Ken Dilger going all the way for the touchdown. Seven to three in the fourth quarter. That'd be before the Dolphins would take the lead. Late but never say die to the 0-2 Buccaneers. Ken Dilger with over 100 yards receiving, getting his team into field goal range for that game-tying field goal. And the kick would be good. 40-yard attempt splits the uprights at 10 apiece, heading into OT. And in that OT, Mercury Morris has two rushing attempts in the row. The first one is for a first down. The second one is in the end zone to seal it for the Dolphins. They're now 5-4 and four and second in the AFC East. Two powerhouse offenses, the 09 Saints and 99 Rams. Stokely would catch this first quarter touchdown, but this game after that would not be too much offense, oddly enough. Warner would make it 7-7 and 7-10 at halftime. Then Warner would throw a pick to Randall Gay to seal it for the Saints. They win 13-7 over the Rams. Both teams struggling to stay afloat in their divisions and the cold weather would not make it any easier. It'd actually be the second game all year that this has happened, raining. We head to the second quarter, where Chandler would fire to Dwight to make it 10 to nothing at halftime. Then with the Falcons up 13 to nothing, they'd score a late field goal to make it 16-0 over the struggling Carolina Panthers. Falcons four and five. The four and four Pittsburgh Steelers against the Winless Bengals early first quarter be a quick touchdown by Lynn Swan, seven to nothing in the first quarter. But the Bengals would strike back as Sison would hit his big play man. Hillary to tie the game at seven and he'd do the icky shuffle. I guess players other than Woods can do that. Well actually now that I think about it, it's not too hard to do. But the Steelers are driving again, but he'd throw and he'd be picked off by Thomas, and he'd return it 102 yards to the house to make it 14 to seven at halftime. Bengals would eventually win the game, 24-14. I believed in the 68 Chiefs, but they were no match for Raider domination. Garrett would fumble the ball early, first quarter, and then it'd be one touchdown by Stabler, another touchdown for Dave Casper, first of two for Van Egan, the second one, a 99-yard run for a touchdown, longest and greatest team's franchise history. 38-7 the final, Raiders now 7-2. 91 Lions, 99 Vikings. First quarter from the 42, Rodney Pete would throw right. And he'd get his big play man, Barry Sanders, 7-3 Lions at halftime. But it'd be all Vikings in the second half. Touchdown, 
Evans, and then later Cunningham would hand it off to Robert Smith, who'd make it 17 to 7 the final. Lions held the ball for only six minutes. Do you hear that? Oh yeah, Madden match for the week time. Chargers and Eagles take off in Qualcomm Stadium. Early field goal, Rob Bernerska, and then later it'd be a touchdown by the Eagles. Pinkston on the reception. San Diego defense atrocious all year, 6-10 to 10 at halftime. The D finally gets the break they were looking for on that interception, Jeff King with the pick. And then you have Dwight Scales getting the end zone for a touchdown, Chargers lead at 13-10 now, and then score yet again, Charlie Joyner, the Hall of Famer, in the end zone, 20-10 to 10 now. But on the very next play, the defense fails yet again on a 73-yard touchdown, for Mitchell, but the Chargers would be driving in the fourth quarter. Winslow with that reception, Capaletti with that one, and it only lead to a field goal though. Chargers yet again struggle in the red zone. Westbrook on fourth and one gets not just the first, but the end zone to take the lead 24 to 23 late in the fourth quarter with just over two to go. Showtime now with just 52 seconds to go. Winslow catching the pass right to the 45 and then to the 40. Breaks a tackle. Oh my gosh, he's got a big play for the Chargers with 30 to go. And then Hank Bauer, I don't know why he's in, but he gets to the end zone for a touchdown. They take the lead 31 to 24. One play left for the Eagles. They don't even pass long. They pass to Westbrook and in turn lose to the Chargers. 05 Seahawks and the 08 Cardinals. Arizona would lead it 7-6 at halftime, but the Seahawks would get a touchdown to make it 14-7 at the end of the third quarter. This game would eventually be sent to overtime where it would be an overtime kick by Josh Brown, and that would be good, and that attempt would give the Seahawks their fourth win of the season. 92 Cowboys and the 98 Packers. First quarter, Brett Favre would hit Andre Rison who would battle in the end zone and take a 7-0 lead, but then Emmett Smith, the Hall of Famer, would counter that attack with a 33-yard touchdown to tie it up at 7 in the second. Then the Packers would counter right before the two-minute warning. They take a 14-7 lead, and then 17-7, Aikman would be hit and picked off by Eugene Robinson. He'll take it to the house. Touchdown Packers, 24-7. That'd be your final. Both teams will struggle to stay atop their divisions. It's the classic decade rivalry, the 9 Colts versus the 7 Patriots. It'd be a field goal fest in the first half. 3-3 three three at the halftime break in the third quarter. It'd be Brady who had hit Wes Welker at his 60th reception of the season to get in the end zone. And then 10-3 to three, it'd be a missed field goal by Diskowski giving Indianapolis a chance, and you know they will take advantage. Dallas Clark trucking one guy and then running to the 10 before trucking another one and getting to the end zone. 10 to 10, big play for the Colts. A field goal to take the lead for the Patriots. It is good. New England up by three. Indy, no timeouts with 40 seconds to play. They get a big play to Colley because he was hit out of bounds, late hit by the receiver, defenseless receiver, and then It'd be Collie would make another play, trucking a guy and get in the end zone to take the lead. 17 to 13, last play for the Patriots. It'd be intercepted, and that's how the Patriots lose to the Colts. Colts now three and six. Oh boy. This was Monday night football, but had no competition whatsoever. The Ravens of 2000 and Jamal Lewis, the 2000 yard rusher. Man, he'd have two touchdowns on the day and help his Ravens get a 26-0 victory. That's the recap of the games now. Our top three plays of the week, Eric Thomas of the Bengals with a big play, getting his team with the lead right before halftime on a 102-yard interception return touchdown. Number two play of the week, Walter Payton. He is a beast. Duh. He'll take the screen pass and run 83 yards for a touchdown, making the 49ers look silly. Bears would eventually lose that game 14 to 17. Number one play of the week. It was the Dallas Clark big play as he would truck two guys to get his team on the board late in the fourth quarter, 10 to 10. Now I'm gonna look at all of the stats from up to week 10. You have the best and worst offenses in the league. Chargers the best offense. Way to go Dan Fouts and Joyner as their team has over 2,000 yards passing 
Patriots and Saints, number two and three. Here are the Pro Bowlers for the AFC and NFC, well, at least the votes. All right, I'll see you later. Week 11 coming up.